mean, gold is interesting. We've been uh, we've been bullish of gold for uh, a few months now, and I mean, it's kind of been stuck in the 1950 area for a while. But it's if you think about it, the the U.S. dollar index (DXY) is is up um, sharply over the last two three months. But gold prices aren't really down; they've just been kind of flat. You have high rates, you have higher dollar, but then you have flat gold. That, in my opinion, is pretty strong price action. I think gold has actually been pretty resilient. So Resilient is the word being used by various money managers, analysts, and prominent investors to describe the performance of gold in the current economic environment. Historically, the price of gold is usually determined by the strength of the U.S. dollar, in which gold is generally denominated. When the dollar is strong and rates are high, gold drops, and when they are weak and low, it climbs sharply. But 2023 has been sort of an anomaly. So far, the precious metal has remained resilient and relatively close to record highs in an environment where the Federal Reserve is raising rates at a very aggressive and largely unprecedented rate. Last Thursday, for example, real yields jumped to their highest level since 2009. Bullion hardly blinked, dropping only by a mere 0.5%. The last time real rates were this high, gold was about half the price. Analysts are saying this could be a permanent paradigm shift for the precious metal, especially as we enter a new era of uncertainties and chaotic geopolitical shifts. Experts have also pointed out that the resilience in gold prices might be a result of the recent activities of central banks, which have been buying up bullion at a record pace since last year. One portfolio manager at Berenberg said at current prices, gold is about $200 too expensive considering the economic environment. Marco Hochst added that the future looks even more attractive for gold. Another popular financial analyst and commentator agrees with Marco. Adam Kobesi is the founder and editor-in-chief of the Kobesi Letter, a leading newsletter that publishes fundamental and technical analysis on stocks, bonds, commodities, and other asset classes. According to Adam, he is very bullish on gold, which he describes as a top safe haven trade despite current economic conditions. In a recent interview with Soar Financially, the analyst talks about gold, the S&P, and his general outlook for the U.S. economy, especially in 2024 and beyond. As we bring you clips from the interview, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks, and enjoy the video. I mean, gold is interesting. We've been uh, we've been bullish of gold for uh, a few months now. It's almost like um, you have high rates, you have higher dollar but then you have flat gold that in my opinion is pretty strong price action i mean in, in an environment like this especially with the fed keeping the put it, keeping the fed funds rate above five percent for a prolonged period of time going forward um i think gold has actually been pretty resilient so it's really interesting because even though we've had a bear market and and, and the lockdown like we had we've had an unprecedented amount of volatility since 2020 but I feel like coming off of this historic bull run, I mean, basically a 10 year bull run where the S&P, I mean, for, for years, the S&P was making new high all time highs every single day. If you go back to 2018, 2019, 2017, like every headline coming out of CNBC and, every, and all the major media outlets was S&P closed the new all time high. And I think what that did was it induced a lot of um, FOMO type price action where once we finally did see volatility for the first time in years, now everyone's saying, "All right, am I is is this is this really a crash, or are, are, is the dip going to be bought, and should I get in now?" And people at the same time, that's that's coming with people moving deposits out of banks. They're they're searching for yield. You have money market funds paying five percent. You have a lot of capital that's actually on the sidelines, surprisingly. Um, and I think you combine those two factors. That's why the market just continues to be bought. I mean, it's, we've had every reason to crash. We're really, I mean, I we've been saying that the low was in last year in October. We still think the low is in. And um, I, I think these two factors are just very hard to fight unless something really changes fundamentally speaking. I think the Fed thinks that they're done raising rates, but they don't want to say it because if they jump the gun and they get markets prepared for no more rate hikes and then they'd have to raise rates again, it's going to be another shock. So they want to leave everything on the table, but I think they know um, that rates are definitely very restrictive right now. And I don't think it makes sense to just keep raising and raising when you don't, monetary policy lags, right? So you kind of have to wait a few months even to see, we, I mean, they raised rates in July. They've been raising rates all year. You kind of have to give it some time to 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 see the data lags. And um, 
unemployment is also something that they're watching. It started spiking a little bit last month. We're from 3.5 to 3.8%, but still historically low. And from an economic perspective, we're still well below, or we're still well ahead of the full employment threshold of 5% of unemployment. Um, so I think the Fed is starting to pay, starting to pave the path for just a very long pause, keep rates sufficiently restricted. That does not mean rates are going to come down. And that also doesn't mean mortgage rates or interest rates are going to come down. But I think the Fed funds rate is, is going to uh, stay at current levels all the way through early 2024, probably even into next summer. Then we can start talking about rate cuts. But if you if you go too far, you risk a recession. And if you cut too early, you risk inflation coming back. And the Fed really does not want to have any of those after what we've had over the last two to three years. During the interview, Adam also gives his outlook on the U.S. economy, especially on the housing and equities markets. According to the popular analyst, there are lots of uncertainties in the economy and the markets at the moment. When the Fed started hiking aggressively, everyone predicted that the central bank's policies will have such a huge effect on asset prices. Nobody predicted that after 11 rate hikes, four of them really massive, the S&P would still be up by 18% over the past 12 months. Adam expects that the markets, including equities and gold, will remain resilient for longer, even if the overall economy takes a bad turn. However, he cautions that there are signs of weakening in the housing markets, especially in the commercial real estate sector. Let's get back to the interview. The economy has been evolving so rapidly over the last couple of years, especially with what's happened with the Fed, with inflation, with commodities, with liquidity, with real estate. Every part of the market is kind of in a different, a different realm. Um, but I do think that markets have been far more resilient than people have expected. I think they will continue to be far more resilient than people have expected. And I think if we do see a recession, it's going to be much more mild than what, what was previously anticipated by everyone, basically, including the Fed. Um, and, you know, the, the labor market is pretty strong. Inflation has been kind of stubborn in the 3 to 4% range, and, and, and it might get a little bit worse now with commodities back on the rise. But generally speaking, I mean, we've been bullish of equities for the majority of this year just because of the fact that this is probably one of the most resilient markets we've ever seen. Um, and I think there are parts of the market that are showing a lot of weakness. I mean, we, you and I briefly just talked about commercial real estate off, off the camera, but that commercial real estate is in severe bear market territory, but then you have housing prices, which are on the exact opposite end of the spectrum. And then you have equities somewhere in the middle. So there's a lot going on. I think there's a lot of opportunity in, in the current backdrop. Yeah. And I think it's important to note that the stock market is not the economy. So you can be bearish of various parts of the economy or various macro trends that you think are concerning, but the, but stocks can still go up. Right. So it's it's important to keep a disconnect between the two in, in some way. Obviously, they are correlated a little bit. But um, just because we are seeing parts of the economy and weakness doesn't mean stocks are going to crash or and not every crash is 2008. Right. So I think there's a lot of a lot of just. We're coming off of 2008. It's the last major recession other than the pandemic induced one for a couple of quarters. It's not it's not a 2008 scenario now. So calling for 2008 is, is not necessarily uh, a smart view in our in our opinion. But I think we're one thing we've really been watching is housing just to kind of determine the state of the consumer where uh, housing is like it's a very interesting situation right now because the housing market, if you just look at the charts, if you look at price, if you look at all the data, you would say that the housing market is in a major bull market. We're not we're not on the brink of anything. Um, delinquency rates on, are are below three percent. Everyone's you know it's this is a great situation at the, at the surface level. But I think that if if something does happen that does make the housing market start to turn lower, that could be something that spreads further into maybe into equities into the record levels of credit card that we have now. Just seeing general weakness in consumers. Consumer spending, you could see retail start to take a hit. You could see tech take a hit. So I think that is one part of the market that we're watching closely. And the housing market is entirely a supply situation. Demand and in, in second property, uh, vacation properties, for example, a second home is down 50% over the last year. You have investors are now are now pulling out of the market pretty rapidly. They're, they're accounting for less than 20% of purchases now in the housing market. And you have, um, but yeah, you have historically low supply because 90% of borrowers are locked into mortgages in the three, four, 5% range, right? So 
Um, you need what we're watching is what will make supply come back to the housing market. And if if that factor becomes likely, if something is going to bring supply back to the to the housing market, that could easily trickle into many, many other parts of this market, especially as we now expect a very long Fed pause, meaning rates aren't really going to come down anytime soon. And supply is unlikely to return from lower rates. The different models of assessing gold's fair value all reflect the basic principle of how the precious metal trades compare to real U.S. bond yields and the dollar's strength. It is typical for money managers to sell safe haven assets like gold whenever the U.S. dollar strengthens and the interest paid by other assets like bonds and cash rises. Anthony Saglambeen, chief market strategist at Ameriprise Financial, described current gold prices as an anomaly all things considered. I get no yield on gold, he stated, but I can get yield on cash. In that respect, I'm surprised at how resilient gold has been. Analysts and money managers like Anthony are looking forward to higher gold prices next year when they project that the Fed will start cutting as the economy slows. Please share your thoughts on Adam's interview and your predictions for gold and other precious metals in the comments section below. Also, ensure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.